When we think about our solar system, you know, we usually picture things that were born and raised right here, formed from the same cloud of gas and dust. But imagine something different. Imagine a visitor, a piece of uh, cosmic history from another star system, traveling light years, crossing that immense void. And now it's here, briefly, a guest of our sun. Today we're doing a deep dive into exactly that kind of object, Comet 3 Atlas. Our mission, really, is to explore the sources, uh, the details about its recent discovery, and break down the physics of this, well, incredibly rare encounter it's about to have with a huge solar storm. It's like we're watching a cosmic experiment unfold in real time. Yeah, and the timing is almost uncanny. Yeah. So let's set the stage first. The name itself tells a story. Comet 3 Atlas. That I stands for interstellar. Interstellar, okay. And the three, st it means it's only the third confirmed interstellar object we've ever spotted. Only the third. Wow. It's very recent, too. It was discovered uh, July 1st, 2025, picked up by the ATL survey system. And the significance, the sheer rarity, is really underlined by how we know where it came from. This isn't just some rock from the Oort cloud, the far edge of our own system. NASA confirmed its extrasolar origin. The proof is locked in its orbit specifically, its hyperbolic orbit. Okay, we hear that term hyperbolic orbit quite a bit. For our listeners who definitely follow this stuff, what's the key technical reason that path is like the smoking gun? Absolute proof it didn't form with us. Uh, it really boils down to pure physics. Velocity, basically. See, anything that's gravitationally bound to our sun, part of our system, follows an elliptical or maybe circular path. It keeps coming back. Like planets, asteroids, or usual comets. Exactly. But a hyperbolic path, that means the object's speed, its kinetic energy, is just too high. It actually exceeds the sun's escape velocity at that distance. So it's like throwing a ball so fast it just leaves Earth's gravity entirely. That's a good analogy. It arrived too fast for the sun to capture it into a repeating orbit. It'll swing past the sun once, and then it's gone back into interstellar space, never coming back. It must have been, well, kicked out of its original star system a long, long time ago. And what strikes me is that finding three i 8 las you know, relatively soon after Umua and Comet Borisov, it kind of challenges that old idea that these interstellar visitors are incredibly rare. It does raise questions. Maybe the galaxy is uh, sending us samples more often than we thought. Maybe our detection methods are just getting better. Probably mid of both. So, okay, the orbit confirms it's an alien visitor, but this visitor isn't just passing through quietly, it's about to face, well, a bit of a trial by fire, wouldn't you say? That's putting it mildly, yeah. Our sources are all pointing to this. 3i8 less is heading straight into the path of a major coronal mass ejection, a CME, what most people call a solar storm. That's right. That's the core of the current excitement and uh, scientific focus. The prediction itself comes directly from NASA's space weather models. They track these huge eruptions from the sun. And their forecast, it shows the CME is on a collision course with the comet. Expected impact around uh, September 25th, 2025, give or take. And we're not just talking about it getting a bit warmer, are we? CMEs are more complex than just heat. Oh, much more. We're talking about a massive cloud of magnetized plasma. Billions of tons of charged particles, threaded with powerful magnetic fields, all erupting outwards from the sun at incredible speeds. So when this blast wave of magnetized plasma hits the comet, the main effect isn't necessarily, you know, boiling off more ice through heat, although that might happen too. The big concern, scientifically, is the interaction with the comet's own environment. Its tail and magnetic field. Exactly. Active comets, as they get closer to the sun and release gas and dust, they ionize some of that material. This creates a kind of temporary magnetic bubble or cavity around the comet nucleus. It's the comet's own weak magnetosphere interacting with the solar wind. Okay. But then comes the CME, this huge blob of plasma with its own strong, tangled magnetic field lines. The impact should cause a massive disturbance, a dramatic physical interaction. The thinking is it could potentially disrupt, maybe even completely sever, the comet's plasma tail. Sever the tail. That sounds incredibly dramatic. And that potential, that physical disconnection, is what makes this so compelling, right? Because we have seen this happen before, it gives us something to compare it to. Precisely. You're likely thinking of the 2007 event with Comet Inc. That's the one. What happened there? Well, a CME, quite a well-documented one actually, slammed into Comet Inc. And astronomers watched, pretty much in real time, as the intense pressure from the CME's magnetic field uh, pinched off and severed the comet's ion tail. Just snapped it. Temporarily, yes. Yeah. The tail disconnected, drifted away, and then as the comet moved out of the CME's wake, it started to regenerate a new tail from the nucleus. 
It was a spectacular demonstration of the sun's power over cometary structures. So that Antic event provides a baseline. It shows this kind of interaction is physically possible. We've observed it. It's absolutely crucial, yes. Uh -oh. That historical data point proves the mechanism is real. We know CMEs can do this to comets. Hmm. But, and this is the really exciting part with Enki, we were watching our kind of comet. Material formed here in our solar system responding to our sun. Right, native material. Now, we're potentially about to observe matter born around a completely different star undergoing the exact same stress test from our sun. That's the key difference. Which naturally brings up a question about that comparison. We're drawing an analogy between an object formed, you know, in our local stellar environment versus one formed potentially light years away under totally different conditions. How scientifically solid is that comparison? Are we just hoping they'll behave the same? That's a fair and uh, necessary question. We operate under the assumption that the fundamental laws of physics, things like plasma physics, electromagnetism, work the same way everywhere in the universe. Right. That's our starting point. Okay, the laws are the same. But the material itself, that's the big unknown. The comet's composition, its structure. If three eyeglass reacts exactly like Enk did, if its tail severs cleanly under the CME's pressure, that would actually be quite profound. It might suggest a surprising uniformity in how comets form and behave, even across different star systems. And if it reacts differently? Well, that's where it gets really interesting. If, say, the tail is much more resistant, or if it disintegrates in a completely different way, maybe more violently, mm -hmm. that tells us something fundamental about the stuff it's made of, something potentially very different from our own comets. Okay, so the physics might be universal, but the building materials could be exotic. Could be. And that's what we're hoping to find out. What makes this whole scenario even more remarkable, almost like cosmic choreography, is the timing. You mentioned it earlier. The solar storm isn't just happening randomly. It's hitting the comet when it's perfectly positioned for us to watch. It really couldn't be much better for observation, scientifically speaking. The collision, predicted for late September 2025 that happens incredibly close to the comet's own closest approach to the sun, its perihelion passage. That's right. The perihelion is expected around October 30th, 2025. And how close does it get? It'll pass about 1.4 astronomical units, or AU, from the sun. So 1.4 times the Earth's sun distance. Which is what, sort of between Earth and Mars's orbit, roughly? A bit further out than Earth, yes. Yeah. Closer than Mars's average distance. And this timing is just... Well, it's observational gold. Why is that specific distance and timing so important? Well, a couple of reasons. At 1.4 AU, it's close enough to the sun that the comet should be highly active. Solar heating will be vaporizing its ices, creating a substantial coma, the fuzzy atmosphere, and a well-developed tail. This maximizes the target, so to speak, for the CME interaction. More tail, more coma, means more potential for visible effects. Okay, so it's switched on. Exactly. But critically, it's also still far enough from the sun. If it were much closer, say, inside Earth's orbit, it would likely be lost in the sun's glare, making detailed observation from Earth, or even with many space telescopes, very difficult or impossible. Right, too close to the spotlight. Precisely. So this distance, 1.4 AU, combined with the timing near perihelion, but before it gets too close to the sun visually, it's this perfect window. Ground-based telescopes, space telescopes like Hubble or Webb, they should be able to get clear views of the interaction without the sun interfering too much. So you have this convergence. A rare interstellar object, a powerful solar storm hitting it, and it all happens when the comet is ideally placed for us to watch. It's like nature set up an unplanned experiment for us. An experiment with potentially huge implications. Absolutely. The goal for scientists worldwide will be to get as much data as possible, images, spectroscopy, to really quantify how this extrasolar material, this alien plasma and dust, responds to our sun's uh, sometimes quite aggressive behavior, and then compare that directly to the decades of data we have on our normal comets. But, and this seems crucial, we need to inject a healthy dose of scientific caution here, don't we? If the whole point is to see if this alien stuff reacts differently, we have to be honest about the uncertainties involved. How confident can we really be in predicting the outcome of this collision? That uncertainty is exactly why this is such a compelling scientific opportunity, not just a foregone conclusion. You're right to stress the caution. While the models predicting the CME's path and timing are generally quite reliable, mm. NASA's gotten very good at that. Predicting the exact effect on an object like 3I Atlas is much, much harder. Because we don't know what it's made of. Fundamentally, yes. We're dealing with an object whose internal composition, its structure, its density, its mix of ices and dust. 
it's completely unknown to us beyond some basic spectroscopic hints, maybe. We've never had a sample return from another star system, obviously. So we're looking at material that clumped together in a totally different environment, a different stellar nursery, different temperatures, different chemical mix. What specific differences might make us skeptical about using Comet Ankh as a perfect blueprint for what might happen? That's the core of the scientific skepticism, or perhaps uh, informed curiosity. It centers on things like the types and ratios of volatile materials, the ices. Comets are often called duty snowballs, right? right? But the snow part can vary a lot. Is it mostly water ice? Or is there a lot more carbon monoxide ice or methane or nitrogen ice? The relative amounts depend heavily on the temperature and density conditions in the protoplanetary disk where the comet originally formed. So if three islas formed somewhere much colder or maybe much warmer than where our comets formed? Its basic structure could be fundamentally different. Maybe it's more porous or denser. Also, consider metallicity, the abundance of elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. If its parent star system had a very different chemical makeup than ours, the comet might contain significantly more or fewer heavy elements, different types of dust grains mixed in with the ice. How might that affect the CME interaction specifically? Yeah, how does that translate to the tail getting severed or not? Well, think about that magnetic cavity it generates. The comet's ability to create and sustain that protective bubble depends on how easily its material ionizes in sunlight and interacts with the solar wind. Different ice compositions, different dust properties, maybe even a slightly stronger or weaker intrinsic magnetic field if it has more metallic content. All of that could affect the strength and stability of its induced magnetosphere. Okay, so if its internal shield is different. The CME might have a different effect. If the shield is weaker, Maybe the CME penetrates more easily, causing a more dramatic disruption than we saw with Ankh. Or conversely, if it's somehow more robust, perhaps the tail holds up better or the interaction is more muted. We just don't have the prior data on extrasolar comet plasma to know for sure. So that lack of prior data means the in comparison is useful context, but it's definitely not a guarantee of the outcome. Exactly. It's our best analogy based on local examples, but we have to be prepared for surprises. It sounds like we basically don't know if the sort of cosmic glue holding three Iapolis together or structuring its interaction with the solar wind is the same type or strength as the glue in our own system's comets. That's a good way to put it, yes. And that fundamental variable, that unknown, means the actual observation, seeing the magnitude of the disruption, whether the tail severs dramatically, subtly, or not at all, that observation becomes the crucial data point. Precisely. That's why astronomers are so eager to observe this. It's the ultimate high-stakes natural experiment. We have this piece of exotic material from elsewhere, placed under extreme stress by our own star's energy, and we have a ringside seat with a perfect viewing window. It's an incredible opportunity to learn about how planetary systems might form and evolve elsewhere. So let's try to synthesize this. What does this all mean for you know someone listening, following the space news? What's the big takeaway here? I think the main takeaway is that this comet, 3 i at this uh, hyperbolic traveler from another star, is giving us an incredibly rare chance. Mm -hmm. A chance to directly watch how matter that formed light years away behaves when it's subjected to the intense energy and magnetic forces of our own sun. It's less about just seeing an object from another star and more about seeing how it reacts to ours. Exactly. And the importance really lies in that potential comparison we keep coming back to. If we do see a dramatic disruption, something that looks very much like what happened to Comet Inc. Then what? Then it strengthens our confidence that the basic physics governing these interactions, plasma dynamics, magnetic fields, really are universal. It would suggest that comets, or at least the way they interact with stars, might be more similar across different stellar systems than we might have guessed. It validates our models. Okay. But if we see something significantly different, if the reaction is, I don't know, weaker or stronger or just yeah. weird. Ah, that's potentially even more exciting. Any anomaly, any deviation from the Enki model becomes a direct clue about the material properties of 3 i Lass itself. It tells us something fundamental about the composition, the structure, maybe even the history of this object. And by extension, perhaps about the star system it came from. Potentially, yes. Yeah. It's a puzzle piece. The fact that we might get to see a physical reaction, something highly visible, measurable, like the tail bending or breaking, they could tell us far more than just analyzing the light reflected off of, you know, the spectroscopy alone. Yeah. Which leads perfectly into a final thought, something for you, our listeners, to really mull over. Consider this. 
Watching the actual physical behavior of 3 I Atlas under stress, seeing how its tail holds up or how violently it disrupts might reveal more about its distant birthplace than just knowing its chemical fingerprint. How so? Well, imagine if the comet turns out to be surprisingly tough. If its structure resists the CME's impact much more effectively than Comet ended, what could that imply about the environment where 3 I Atlas formed? That's a fascinating question. Does a tougher structure suggest it formed in, say, a much more turbulent or chaotic protoplanetary disk? Or maybe one with a different chemical balance that leads to stronger ice or different internal bonding? Perhaps its parent star had a much fiercer solar wind that this comet had to endure regularly. Or conversely, if it disintegrates much more easily, does that imply a gentler origin or different volatiles? Exactly. The way this alien ice and dust responds to our sun's power could be like reading a faint inscription, a tiny window into the conditions, temperature, density, chemistry, violence surrounding the birth of another completely unknown stellar system. The universe has essentially fed us a physical sample, albeit one we can't touch, and now our star is about to put it through the ringer. It's an experiment we couldn't have designed. So keep your eyes on the news and forecasts around late September. We are potentially about to watch cosmic history unfold, a unique glimpse into matter from another star.